So I was just going back and watching uh, the video that I put up for you last week. And I realized that I, I didn't want everyone to walk away from that thinking, oh, well, this is the checklist that I should use for every shot I do, because it's not. I don't want you to think like that. There's a, a writer, a New York Times best-selling fantasy science fiction. I think I've never read a single one of his books, but his name is Brandon Sanderson. And, uh, and I found him on YouTube. Somebody recommended him to me. But he here's this lecture, Cook versus Chef. And I loved this lecture because it, it basically was what I've always thought about this subject. You can be a cook and be able to follow a recipe really well and make a fine dinner, but a chef knows all those rules and can, can create new things and go off of the recipe that's written in the book and make changes. So let's go back into that uh, image preparation setup. And I've started the scene over from scratch. I'm gonna create a new preset. I'm gonna call it Hycon, just like we did last time. Hycon, and turn off everything except for uh, color and blur related. So I hit okay. I'm gonna go into levels. I'm gonna clip my highlights a little bit. I'm going to gamma up in my synthize inverted gamma. <laughs> that looks okay. But we're not doing color corrections to make the image prettier. You know, we were talking about, hey, we'll add a little saturation and make it look. We don't even need to do that. I'm just right clicked on saturation to bring it back to the default value. All we want is to give synthize more to grab onto. So I'm gonna hit okay there. And in the features tab, under advanced, I'm going to change small and large to, click on that, eight and 16. And in fact, I might even, I might even, uh, I'm gonna change this to 16 and 32 because we are dealing with this 4K plate, so great. All right, and I'm gonna zoom in here and look at our grain again, just to make sure that we deal with that uh, filtering noise reduce. I'll pull that up just a little bit. Why? Why do you want to noise reduce? Well, on the really most grainy, super grainy shots, I'll even pre-process the log footage and run it through neat video and get even better noise reduction. Uh, but the reason you do the noise reduction is because when you've got all that grain in there and you've got a 2D tracker following a feature, well, the grain causes the tracker to have more high frequency noise in it sometimes and by doing what we just did it, it can reduce the high frequency noise on small search area trackers this seems fine uh, i'm going to do blip cell frames perfect so i'm going to hit peel all synthize selects uh, some lovely features for us let's go into the tracker room so we can see what that looks like Another way to make it easier to see what's what's going on is you can clear all blips. Okay, yeah, nice. Okay, so great. But let's say we wanted to see if we could pull out more features in here. This is especially useful if you're doing manual tracking. It's helpful to know how to do it. You know, in the auto tracking world, you might need to color correct your image to pull out more detail in the darks. So let's do that. I'll put this over here. Let's create a new preset for this so that we're not constantly changing our Hycon preset. So we're gonna make a new preset. We'll call this Hycon Darks. Let's turn off everything except for color and blur related as usual and hit okay. This time, we're gonna drop the highlights massively. By dropping the highlights, I mean we're clipping the highlights. We're dropping the clip point. So I've dropped the clip point to 0.35. We really go pretty far. But you'll notice when we do that, that gives us all of this information in here that we couldn't see before. So let's, let's keep that as our Hycon darks and hit OK. Flush the cache. Synthize is now going to apply that color correction to the whole image. It's taking a little while to cache the frames. 
but it's done and we're gonna hit blips all frames again. Okay, and peel all. Let's go into the um, floating graph editor and just see how many trackers we currently have. We've got 240 trackers. 240 trackers because our maximum tracker count on each pass was set to 120 and we've done two passes. Let's make another color preset and we're gonna call this one new preset Icon lights. I'm gonna turn off resolution, lens, and stabilization and region of interest related. So with the Icon lights, we're gonna set that back to the default by right clicking on it. We can probably bring that down a little bit. And then gamma up kind of a lot. So when you do that and we're really making the darks just become all black, we're actually removing features. Does that make sense? Let's take a look in the tracker tab again. We're removing features that Synthize can detect by just turning them all dark. And we're forcing Synthize to find features in these lighter areas. Going back in here, if I go to Hikon Darks, we're now removing features in the brightest areas of the image. Synthize won't find anything there, but it will start finding things in the darker parts of the image. So set that back to Hikon Lights. I'm gonna hit OK, go to the Features room, and I'm gonna say Blips All Frames. All right, uh, peel all, clear all blips. And there we go. That's, that's pretty good coverage. That's pretty good blip coverage. Pretty good tracker coverage is what I meant to say. Blips are not trackers. Trackers are not blips, but the blips are what create the trackers. Let's uh, go to the solver room and just hit solve again. You know what, before we do it, just uh, so we can see the image more in a more somewhat pleasing light, I'm just gonna set it back to high con and uh, hit go over here. That was just for, purely for cosmetic reasons. That, that's not gonna affect the solution at all. But I'm gonna hit go and there's our solution. And once again, we get our nice little Valley of Buddhas. This, by the way, was shot at the uh, Monastery of 10,000 Buddhas. I think that's what it's called. It's in uh, Hong Kong. So I shot that there. I shot all of this. So if you ever see bad camera work, it's all on me. Uh, let's look at our error. Holy cow. 3.46, that's the highest error we've had yet. Don't fear. Uh, I'm going to clean up the trackers. Eliminate the bad frames, hit fix. Set this to refine, go. Clean up trackers again, fix. Look, by the way, our error is down to 1.107. So we're back to where we were before. Hit go. Hey, now we're, we're below one pixel, which is where I said, I'm ready to, to deliver this to the client. But you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna do it one more time. Clean up trackers, fix, and go. All right, so now we're down to 0.885. And we didn't change the big or small size on the feature detection. Small and big, I left at 16 and 32. And I left them at those high values because we're dealing with a 4K image. And so our tracker size is going to be 16 pixels and 32 pixels. So this is all great. Um, we're back to, hey, we can deliver a shot now. And we didn't use any changes to the small or big feature size. I'm gonna take one more step forward that I would do, I do this on every shot. If you go into the lens room, you can hit calculate distortion here. If you also go to the solver room, that same control is down here. It's in two places because if you're dealing with lens stuff, well, you want it there, you want it to be convenient. If you're about to solve the shot, you wanna say, oh, you know what, calculate distortion as well. Also convenient. So it's the same control, it's just in convenient places where you might wanna see it. That's why you would see a, a control like that repeated. I turned on calculate distortion and I'm going to hit refine, make sure I'm in refine mode and hit go again. Hey, look, our, we just 
improved it by uh, a one hundredth of a pixel. So that's that's good. So how does Synthize calculate distortion? Don't you have to shoot a distortion grid? Don't you have to? No. no. Um, and in fact, when you go and you shoot distortion grids out on set, they're not as good as this. Because that distortion grid you shot on set is a one-off that only applies to that particular lens. I mean, that manufactured lens. Why else isn't it okay? So you've got this gigantic distortion grid that you made and you think, oh, we're gonna make it huge and we're gonna put it far away from the camera to make it even better. Well, that focal length that you're using at that distance to shoot that huge distortion grid is because of lens breathe going to change the, the nature of the distortion. How does Synthize calculate distortion? Then, well, if we look at our image here, if we look actually at our scene, this outside green diamond is the 2D tracker. The inside uh, little X, that's the 3D point out in space. If I select it and you look over here, you can see that's that's where that point exists out in 3D space. Here's Here it is from the front view. Here it is from the left. So that point exists out in 3D space Synthize calculated where that point exists. Now we're looking through the camera and we can see that point represented in 2D. You can look at that point and, and see how well it sticks to the 2D tracker, that 3D position. So as that 3D point moves toward the top of the frame and that 2D tracker that's going along with it, as they move out of position to one another, you can graph that. And you can use that graph for many trackers to calculate what the distortion is. What In review, what have we covered here today? I don't want you to be a cook. I want you to be a chef. I want you to be thinking about how can you more easily 2D track things? How can you set up image pre-processing to see, to develop like X-ray vision, like Superman and look and see things that you couldn't have seen before. Uh, this is why you should always get the raw plate from the client. That's pretty much it. Um, I don't think there's really a lot more to go into here. I want to go, I want to apply some of this in the next tutorial. I want to go into uh, shots that you should never even try to auto track. I have, a, I have another shot that I shot in Shanghai that is a perfect example of something you might see in a movie that needs to be 3D tracked to get it just a camera track. Super challenging, lots of motion blur, lots of shaky camera, something that is going to be, I think, impossible to auto track, but we're gonna try it anyway. So what are, what are we supposed to do? Uh, you're supposed to leave comments. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. You're supposed to like this video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, you don't have to like it. You could hate the video. There's no hate button though. Uh, what else? Um, oh, and then subscribe because I'll be producing these as quickly as possible. I'm trying to hold myself to a hard deadline and release these more regularly uh, so that more good 3D tracking can happen out in the world. And that's it. Um, Thank you for watching uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Yes.